What's up, what's up, party people? Welcome to Stony Cast number 81 and season 3, episode 14 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. It's your boy, Stony, back. Following Stony Giving Weekend for the 81st time. And I'd like to welcome all of my fellow hoodlums, chiefs, lowlifes, hustlers, scumbags, altar boys with unhealthy relationships with their priests, foul-mouthed, raging alcoholics with abusive language, fiends, degenerates. Hey, listen, if you're new to the show, you probably fit into one of those categories, so welcome. And make sure to hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner down here so you can be notified every time I put out a new video, usually around this time on Friday evening, unless otherwise noted. Super Bowl 57 trip to Las Vegas is still in the works, and it's only 10 weeks away, so the sooner we get on it, the cheaper the flights and rooms will be, so let me know if you're interested. I understand that unlike me, a lot of you are married, so just think about the last time you were in Las Vegas before you got married, and know that that can happen again in early February, all right? Moving on, last week was the true definition of a grind. After 61 plays, a record for us, we wound up 32-29, and 29, which leaves us right where we started last week. Considering it wasn't a losing week, we'll take it and move on to conference championship weekend in college football. So let's go. Got to go quickly because the first game's starting in about an hour, right? We'll kick off the week tonight at 8 Eastern in Las Vegas with a great matchup where number four USC is a two and a half point favorite over 11th ranked Utah. All Utah needs to do, all USC needs to do, is win, and they are in the college football playoff. But to do so, they got to avenge their only loss of the season when Utah knocked them off back in October at Rice Eccles in Salt Lake City. Since then, USC's ripped off five straight, and quarterback Caleb Williams has the Heisman Trophy virtually sewn up. Utah had a tough three-point loss two weeks ago to Oregon in Eugene, but the Utes are 9-3 and three and ranked 11th for a reason. They're tough and physical. Do I think this will be a shootout like the last one? No. Either way, it plays into Utah's hands. SC can score. We know this. But so can Utah. I may be nuts, but I'm going to roll with the Utes and take the points. Tomorrow at noon Eastern at Ford Field in Detroit, 7-5 and five, Toledo limps in at 7-5 and five, and is a short one and a half, I said that twice, and is a short one and a half point favorite over 9-3 Ohio in the MAC Championship. Despite losing two straight, Toledo still won the West Division even though they come into this one with two banged up quarterbacks. Ohio lost their quarterback for the season, but their defense has carried them as it's the number one unit in the MAC. It's for that reason that I not only like Ohio to win outright, but I'm also committing the cardinal sin and taking the under in the MAC championship. Ohio money line and under 56. How's that? <laughs> also at noon Eastern tomorrow, the Big 12 championship takes place at Jerry World in Arlington. His third ranked TCU is a two and a half point favorite over number 10 Kansas State. Just like USC, TCU's path is clear. Win, and you're in the college football playoff. Lose, and you're and you're not, let's face it. At 12-0, Sonny Dykes' first season at the helm, TCU has defied all expectations in running the table so far. K-State, on the other hand, has won four out of five down the stretch, comes in at 9-3, and, and aside from TCU, is the hottest team in the Big 12. Nebraska transfer quarterback Adrian Martinez guides that offense, but Deuce Vaughn is still the motor, and as good as TCU has been this year, they had to drop one, and it's it's going to happen tomorrow, right? It's, it, it, there's, I mean, did anybody really think TCU was going to run the table? They could, they could, but I don't think so. I like K-State. I'll take the Wildcats and the points. Yes, I'm saying that both TCU and and USC will lose to throw the CFP committee into a complete uproar. Are you ready for Alabama and Ohio State to back their way in? Well, it's going to happen. 10-2 Troy hosts 9-2 Coastal Carolina in the Sun Belt Championship at 3.30 Eastern. The Trojans lost two of their first three games this season and have since rolled off nine straight Ws. 
As eight and a half point favorites, Troy must rely on their balanced offense to keep Coastal off the field. The Chanticleers ripped off a 9-1 season and were looking fantastic until last week's blowout loss to James Madison. Madison won 47-7 and would be playing today if not for the NCAA rule prohibiting them from playing because of their transition to the FBS. Troy is the obvious favorite, but I'm going to stay true and take the dog here, plus the points. The SEC Championship goes at 4 Eastern in Atlanta and has lost some of its luster. A shitty-ass LSU loss last week, which was only a matter of time, let's face it. So it's number one Georgia as a 17.5 point favorite over 14th ranked LSU in a game that doesn't really matter unless the Bulldogs lose badly. Since that's not going to happen, Georgia is going to wind up in the college football playoff regardless of what happens here, and LSU doesn't have the horses to keep up with the dogs, especially after getting rolled by an even shittier team in Texas A&M last week. Yeah, it seems foolish to lay this kind of wood in a conference title game, especially the SEC championship, but this is a mismatch. And Georgia gets a month off after this game to prep for the CFP. Dogs in hot town? Yeah, this is going to be a boat race. Oh, hell yeah, give me the dogs. American Athletic Championship goes at 4 Eastern in New Orleans. Is Number 18, Tulane, is a four-point favorite to 22nd ranked UCF in a rematch of a game played just two weeks ago. In that one, UCF came into the Big Easy and knocked off Tulane, but the 10 and 2 Green Wave still get to host the title game over the 9 and 3 Knights. While the 38 31 final from two weeks ago is a bit misleading, UCF controlled the game and dominated Tulane throughout, let's face it. Now's Tulane's shot to get even and wind up in a New Year's Day bowl game with a win, probably. I'll roll with the green wave to exact their revenge and get the cover. Also at 4 Eastern, the Mountain West title is up for grabs as 9-3 and three Boise State is a three-point home favorite over 8-4 and four Fresno State. The two schools met back on October 8th on the Smurf turf as Boise rolled to a 40-20 to 20 win. Fresno hasn't lost since while winning seven straight, punctuating it with a 30 to nothing shutout of Wyoming last week. Boise on the Smurf turf is always a tough out, but Fresno is clearly the hot hand right now, and I'll take the dogs on the road and the field goal on the road. With the FCF's playoffs going on, there are 20 teams left, and we can't let a week go by without firing on one. At 5 Eastern tomorrow at Hornet Field, yes, Hornet Field, Sacramento State is a 13-point favorite over Richmond. A week after losing to William and Mary, Richmond rolled Davidson 41 to nothing last week to get to 9 and 3 after finishing third in the Colonial this year. The second ranked Hornets are loaded and primed to win the whole damn thing. And while it may be short sighted to lay two touchdowns in a playoff game, we're going to roll with the Institute of Higher Education at California State University at Sacramento. Stingers up. At 8 Eastern in Charlotte, 9th ranked Clemson is a 7.5 point favorite over number 23 North Carolina in the ACC title tilt. After Notre Dame blew out Clemson a month ago, the Tigers appeared to have righted the ship until dropping their rivalry game last week to South Carolina. North Carolina may have earned the, their, their spot in this one, but let's face it, they clearly backed in after dropping their last two games to Georgia Tech and NC State after winning six straight. With Clemson as a seven and a half point chalk and these two teams not meeting in the regular season, I'm going to roll with Carolina and I'm going to take the points here. The Big Ten's idle game qualifies as the degenerate special of the week at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indy at 8 Eastern. At, as uh, second-ranked Michigan is a 17-point favorite over 8-4 and four Purdue. Michigan's blowout win at the Horseshoe last week took all the headlines, along with Jim Harbaugh's ascent as one of the best coaches in the business. Most believe Michigan is in the playoff even if they lose, but make no mistake, Michigan will not lose this one. The problem they have is that the spoiler makers are in perfect position to do exactly what they're best at, spoiling. Yep, Michigan wins, but Purdue covers. Moving on to the NFL now. It's on Sunday. The 4-7 and seven Steelers are in Atlanta to take on the 5-7 and seven Falcons with the line set at a pick em. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Damn, must have COVID. 
Call the call the ambulance. Uh, anyway, Steelers in Atlanta, pick them. Both these squads are so good that they're almost predictable. <laughs> The Steelers have won two out of three, so they'll lose here. The Falcons have lost three out of four, so they're due, especially in Hot Town. Yep, I'll take the Falcons for some odd reason. At 1 Eastern in the Windy City, 4-8 and eight Green Bay comes to town as four-and-a-half-point favorites over the 3-9 and nine Bears. Yes, Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears, but he doesn't own anything this year, is banged up, and has lost the locker room. Justin Fields might play. Doesn't matter. Play or not, Aaron Rodgers still owns the Bears. And until the Bears prove otherwise, I have to take the pack. I don't really have a choice. Lay them. At 1 Eastern, two 4-7 and seven teams square off in the Motor City as Detroit and Jacksonville are a pick em. Both squads are sneaking up on the pack. And as much as I like what Jacksonville has going right now, i.e. Trevor Lawrence's continued maturity into a star, there's something about the Lions at home lately. At 1 Eastern in Stoneyapolis, one of the best games of the week takes place as the 7-4 and four Jets take on the 9-2 and two Vikings. Many is a three-point favorite, and now is the time to buy low on the Vikings and sell high on the Jets. Yeah, sure, the Jets looked great last week behind Mike White as their new quarterback and their really good defense, but we're talking about Mike White here. Slow your roll. Give me the Vikings in a surprisingly easy win. At 1 Eastern at Snoopyville in New Jersey, two teams meet up that were supposed to be shitty but find themselves locked in a playoff chase as the 7-4 and four Giants host the 7-5 and five Commando Skins. I don't like Daniel Jones. I don't like Taylor Heineke. The G-Men have dropped 3 out of 4 and Washington has won 3 straight and 4 out of 5. With the Skins as a 2.5 point favorite, I have to take the home road chalk, or excuse me, I have to take the road chalk here because they're the hot team. Also at 1 Eastern, two playoff bound teams meet up in Philly where the 10 and 1 Eagles are four and a half point favorites over the 7 and 4 Titans. Tennessee's streak of eight straight covers came to a halt in last week's home loss to Cincinnati, and nobody really believes that the Eagles are the best team in the NFL, do they? Or maybe I'm just naive. I don't think I am, so I'll take the Titans and the points on the road in what should be a good one. At 1 Eastern in Baltimore, the 7-4 and four Ravens are an 8.5 point home favorite over the 3-8 and eight Broncos. The problem here is that the Ravens have trouble covering big numbers. So whenever they're favored by this many points, you always bet against them. They also have trouble winning games because of a terrible second half defense. And now Lamar Jackson's questionable. The bigger problem, though, is how truly horrible the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson have become. I mean, I don't give a shit if no starting quarterbacks play the rest of the season against Denver. I can't, in good conscience, take the Broncos' disaster ever again. Give me the Ravens. The last 1 o'clock Eastern start is in Houston. As the return of Deshaun Watson is the story for the 4-7 and seven Browns against the 1-9-1 nine, one, nine and one Texans. With Cleveland installed as a 7-point favorite, all they're going to do is run the ball. And since the Texans' defense is soft against the run, and Houston is the worst team in the NFL that has many, many, many bad teams, I'll take the Brownies as the big road chalk here. 6-5 and five, Seattle heads to La La Land to take on the 3-8 and eight Rams at 4 Eastern with the Hawks as a 7-point favorite. I like the Seahawks and all they've done this year, and I laugh at the shit show that the fake-ass, phony, paper champion Rams have become. But can I possibly take three straight road favorites of over a touchdown? No, I'll take the Rams in the number. So, I don't know why, but I am. The game of the day is at 4 Eastern in Santa Clara as the 8-3 and three Dolphins take on the 7-4 and four 49ers. Something's got to give when the NFL's top passer in the number 2 offense, Tua Tagovailoa, meets the NFL's top defense, led by Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. 
The Niners are a four-point favorite and have not allowed a second-half point in four straight games, which include last week's four-quarter shutout of New Orleans, 13 to nothing. Mike McDaniels versus Kyle Shanahan is another intriguing matchup as they both know each other very well. Because of the defense lately and the home digs in Silicon Valley, I'll take the Niners and lay the short number. A rematch of last week's AFC Championship game takes place at 425 Eastern in the Queen City as the 7-4 Bengals host the 9-2 Chiefs. Mahomes versus Burrow with the Chiefs installed as a short 2.5 point favorite. 2 point favorite, excuse me. Mahomes has been nothing short of brilliant. And he'll need to be again here because the Chiefs defense is their weakness. And they won't be able to slow down Joe Burrow, especially with the returns of Joe Mixon and Jamar Chase, although probably in a limited capacity. I like the Bengals here at home on the money line. 425 Eastern, the 4-7 and seven Raiders are a one-point home favorite over the 6-5 and five Chargers. The Raiders have won two straight in overtime walk-off fashion to give them hope. But while the Chargers continue to over- underwhelm, I mean, I have the Raiders. Have the Raiders figured something out? The Chargers are a bad pick as a favorite, right? But they're great as a dog. We'll take them here on the road to get the win on the money line. Sunday night at 8.20 Eastern in Jerry World in Arlington, the 8-3 and three Cowboys are a big 10.5 point home favorite over the 4-7-1 and one Colts. The Cowboys will continue to win as they've hit the soft part of their schedule, but a number that big will only prove what we learned on Thanksgiving. Cowboys win, but don't cover. Give me the Colts. The final NFL game of the week is at 8.15 Monday night as the 4-8 and eight Saints head to Tampa to take on the 5-6 and six Buccaneers. Neither team's very good, and Tom Brady and the Bucks have historically had issues with the Saints' defense in Tampa. With the Bucks as a three and a half point favorite, I have no choice but to take the Bucks here because I just can't take Andy Dalton on the road at night. No way, it's just not going to happen. College hoops, y'all! College, college hoops, y'all! My specialty goes tonight, seven Eastern, starting shortly as Clemson hosts Wake Forest in both schools' ACC opener. They're both playing well right now, and the 6-2 and two Tigers are a three-point favorite over the 7-1 and one Demon Deacons. I like Wake here in the mild upset. Also at 7 Eastern, 6-2 and two Charlotte is a 6.5-point home favorite over 5-3 and three Appala- Appalachian State. Too big of a number here. Give me the Mountaineers plus the points. 7 Eastern in Raleigh, 7-1 and one North Carolina State is a 9-point favorite over 5-3 and three Pittsburgh in the ACC opener for both. I like the pack a lot and think they should be ranked by now, but that's a big number to lay in a conference opener. I'll take the Panthers and the big number. At 8, at eight Eastern, a rematch of the 2021 National Championship takes place at the Pentagon in Sioux Falls as number 14 South... as number 14 Gonzaga is a short two-point favorite over six-ranked Baylor. Both, both schools are 5-2 and two in the Peacock Classic, which has the makings of a good one. Big men Drew Timmy of Gonzaga and Flo Tamba of Baylor are the only starters left from that game two years ago, a year and a half ago. Gonzaga gets their revenge here with the win and the cover. Number 22, Maryland, is a one-and-a-half-point home favorite over number 16, Illinois, in both schools' Big Ten opener at 9 Eastern tonight at the Xfinity Center in College Park. Good one right here. Both schools won their respective games easily in the Big Ten ACC Challenge the other day, and now they face each other in what should be a, a solid, solid opener. I like the Illini here to get the outright win on the road. We'll start tomorrow's very full college hoop schedule at noon Eastern as 4-4 Georgetown is a 4.5 point favor over 3-4 South Carolina. The Hoyas have shown some improvement so far for head coach Patrick Ewing, especially on the glass, but they won't be able to take down the Gamecocks. I'll take USC plus the 4.5. Phones just blow it up. Must be time. Ah, we still got about 45 minutes till game time. At noon, East, at noon Eastern at the Joyce Center, 6-1 and one Notre Dame is a 4.5-point favorite over slumping 3-4 and four Syracuse. The Orange always start slow, and this will be another one they let get away as the Irish get the win and the cover at home. 
Twelve thirty Eastern, two and five Villanova. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that. It should be five and two. Is a three point favorite over six and one Oklahoma and Stony Delphia. <clears throat> yeah, Nova's off to a slow start and misses Jay Wright, but they're still a short home fa- home chalk here over the not yet tested Sooners. I like Nova at home. Four and four Temple is a two point home favorite in Stony Delphia over five and two Virginia Commonwealth at one Eastern. Temple is nice, but VCU gets the W here on the road. Speaking of Stony Delphia, we'll stay in the city of brotherly love for the third straight game as a battle of five takes place at 2 Eastern, where 5-5 five and five Penn is a five-point favor over 3-4 and four LaSalle. One thing I've learned over the years in Philly's Big Five is to always take the dog. Give me the Explorers plus the points. 7-2 and two Duke is a 17-point favorite at home at Cameron Indoor against 5-3 and three Boston College in both schools' ACC opener tomorrow. Duke is going to win the ACC this year and is going to win this game, but not by 18. Give me the Eagles. Number 10, Indiana, is a three-point road favorite against 5-2 and two Rutgers at 4 Eastern in Piscataway. The Hoosiers are off to a hot start, and this could be a letdown after knocking off North Carolina on Tuesday, but not yet. I'll take IU and lay the lumber. Number. <laughs> number. And that ain't lumber. That's just a small number. Southern Illinois heads to St. Louis to take on the Billikens at 4 Eastern with St. Louis an 8.5 point home favorite. I like the Salukis here on the road getting the number. Wisconsin and Marquette meet up in Milwaukee with the Warriors. Yes, I still call them the Warriors, not the Golden Eagles. A 5.5 point favorite. I like Marquette a lot, but this is a great rivalry in which both schools have won 5 of the last 10. So I'll roll with the Badgers on the road here. At 6.30 Eastern in Cincinnati, another good one. 5-3 and three Xavier's a 3.5 point home favorite over 6-1 and one West Virginia. Xavier is slowly improving, but I like the fighting Bob Huggins over the fighting Sean Millers with the points. At 6.30 Eastern in New York, 7-1 and one Yale is a 14.5 point road favorite over 2-5 and five Stony Brook. I'm going to take Stony Brook because, well, because they're Stony Brook. I mean, come on. At 9 Eastern, UC Irvine is a 7.5 point home favorite over Fresno State. And as much as I like what the Anteaters are doing, I'll roll with Fresno. Here's the road dog. At 10 Eastern in the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas State is a 6.5 point favorite over Wichita State. And I'm going to roll with the Shockers on the road here. Don't really have a choice. At 10.30 Eastern in Fort Worth, top-seeded Houston's a 10-point favorite over St. Mary's. And I have no choice but to take the Gales and all those points to give Houston all they can handle. At 11 Eastern in La La Land, Nevada is a 3.5 point road shock at Loyola Marymount. The Lions are young, but Reno is deep and long. I'll take the Wolfpack here and lay them. And finally, the Degenerate Special for Saturday goes at 11 Eastern. That's two and a half point road favorite UNLV takes on San Diego. The Toreros could be dangerous, but don't have the horses to keep up with the Rebels here. I'll take Las Vegas on the road to close out the day. Finally, looking ahead to next Thursday's first NFL game of the new week, The Raiders are a five-point road favorite in La La Land against the Rams. The Raiders are improving and the Rams are toast. But the Raiders is a a five-and-a-half-point road chalk over anyone? Yep, I'll take the Raiders and I'll lay them to start the new week. So that's 11 college football plays, 14 NFL matchups, and 20 college hoops plays. That gives us another 45 plays for the week. All free, donated by your boy. For free. No one else gives you this and continues to hit at such a high level. This is the week to go big and bury the books. So let's hit them hard and hit them early. And remember that if you want to win big, you got to bet big. You can't go broke taking a profit. Scared money don't make money. To me, the action is the juice. There's no money. There's money on the streets that absolutely cannot be ignored. And finally... Good luck to you.